Hey, welcome back. Today's video is going to be pretty short, uh, but I wanted to show you how to debug a Zig program. I don't think I've actually done this on video yet. And uh, one of the things that I've done many, many times is use print based debugging, which is excellent. It works fine. Uh, but sometimes you might need more than what you can get from print based debugging. So we're going to do that today. I'm going to show you how to use LLDB to debug a Zig program. Um, and we'll talk about some of the things you can do to make that a little easier or um, really go into using the debugger. So my background is uh, mostly front end web with some mobile and some back end with Go uh, and uh, kind of all over the place. But the point being, until I started working with Go, I really had a built in debugger experience almost the entire time. So in, in the browser, you can type debugger and have a nice debugger experience or manually add breakpoints and whenever that hits that code, it'll execute it or stop execution, I should say, and give you a debugger. With Flutter and Dart, the debugging experience is built into the platform and it's super, super nice. So I start doing Go and I have to figure out tools like Delve or LLDB and figure out how I'm going to debug my Go code. Well, thankfully, that same process can be used with Zig. So that's what we're going to do today. So let me pull this up. I'm going to open up main.zig in this project. So I've got a fairly basic Zig program up here, and uh, it's 27 lines. There's not much going on. We import the standard library. There's a function called divide. It uses the div trunk operator here, uh, or built in, I should say. Um, and then it averages uh, a series of numbers. So you can see there's a divide function, which maybe is a little redundant since we're just calling div trunk, but we'll you'll see why that's useful here in a minute. Uh, there's a function called average that takes in a slice of values. Um, and then we average those numbers together. So we add them all up into a result. There's a couple different bugs in here. Uh, they're intentional, but the point is to show you how to debug those. So um, yeah, so feel free to pause and read through this more if you'd like. But we're going to come over here. I'll save that. And then I'm going to zig build run. Okay. It builds successfully. We have a panic uh, division by zero. So that's what we are going to debug today. Based off the code and kind of the stack trace, you probably can figure out exactly what needs to happen here. So I'm going to zig build. This is going to give me an exe. And then I'm going to lldb zig out bin zig lldb. Okay, and you can see that LLDB started. It says, my mouse is being weird. Uh, LLDB has started right here. Uh, the target create is uh, zig out bin LLDB. That's what we gave it. And then you can see that the current executable is set to, and then there's the full path. You can see that it's an ARM64 executable as well. Okay, so we can do a couple different things. So the simplest thing would be to set a breakpoint, right? So we can set a breakpoint on main. We can set a breakpoint on a specific line. So if I wanted a breakpoint main.zig on line like 14, uh, we can also set a breakpoint on a specific symbol. So if I want to set a breakpoint on when divide is called, I can set a breakpoint when divide is called. Now we actually want to run the program. So we can use the run keyword. And you can see that it starts running the program. It launched it here sorry, right here, and then it stopped. Uh, it suspended the program, and that's because we hit a breakpoint. We hit our very first breakpoint, which is our uh, main breakpoint. So we can do a couple different things here. Uh, we don't have too much going on at this scope, but what we can do is we can say frame. If you run frame, it'll tell you how to use it. So I want to frame variable, and this is gonna show me all of the variables that are in frame. Again, there's not a ton going on here since we're still in our main function, but what if we step into that function using the step keyword? So now, if we run frame variable, you can see that we have a little bit more in our scope, and that's because we are starting to add things to our scope. So let's step over using the next keyword, and now you can see that we're on the while loop here. And if we frame variable, you can see that we now have our env count in the frame as well. So that env count is what we just set up here. So there's information on that. Um, we can also just print variables. So if I wanted to print env count, you can see that it's an unsigned long and it's a zero, it's set to zero, which is helpful as well. Uh, if you're working with like slices or arrays, you can index those as well. Um, yeah, so I think that kind of helps with some of the defaults here. 
So how do we actually use this to debug a problem, right? So let's go up a stack frame. And you can see here that we have uh, assembler instructions that we're working with. Again, we can check our frame. Uh, there's nothing in this case because we're up at the topmost frame, I believe. So we can go down a frame as well. Um, we can, you can see that we're already at the bottom of the stack. We can use BT to get a backtrace if we find uh, that if we find that that may be helpful. Um, but I think what I want to do here is uh, continue to move to the next breakpoint. So we've hit our next breakpoint, which is um, also in our main method. Let's continue again. We can see that we are on line 14, which is one of the breakpoints that I set. So what we might want to do here is take a look at frame variable. And you can see that we have values and there's a pointer and a length. We have a result, which is 101, which maybe if we're looking at the problem, uh, two problems, that result is not correct. So if we were to add those up and then divide them, we shouldn't have an odd number there. Um, because the numbers are 10, 20, 30, and 40. So it should be 100. So there's there's a bug right there that we found. Um, that's an easy fix, but we can talk about that in a minute. But what I really want to get to is I want to continue uh, to this divide function. So now that we're in divide, I want to print B. And we can see that B is zero, right? So we ran into this error. This is the... Uh, divide by zero error that we just saw when we tried to execute this. This is the cause. This is what's the issue. We're passing in zero and we're trying to divide by zero, which is a no-no. So where do we go from here? We can go up a stack frame and we can see where this is being called. So now I have the result. I really want to know what is index. Oh, well, index is zero in this case. Why is it zero? Because we're using a range, zero dot dot, on our index. So now that we're here, we've identified the problem. We can't divide by zero. We probably don't want this to be zero. And instead, we probably want to set that to one. I even called it out for you in a comment right above it as well. Uh, okay, so I think this highlights two issues that we were able to quickly find. Okay, so now that we've used our debugger and we've tracked this down to specific areas, what we can do is go into our main.zig and we can fix this, right? So there's two issues that we found. So let's just fix the first one, which is that divide by zero error. And instead, if we change that to one, I think we'll get what we're expecting. So I'm just gonna zig build run. And we get a result of four. Actually, my math may be off, but I think that's more or less the result that I was expecting. Yeah, sorry. I don't know why I have this referred to as average. This should be something like calculate because it is not determining an average. Uh, it is a different series of calculations. So let's change that to calculate and make that more clear. Sorry, sorry about that. And then uh, the second issue is like we have this, this one as our default, right? So we're adding one to all of these values. So we mentioned that earlier. Uh, that's another bug that we can catch with LLDB. It makes it a little easier to see. That one's maybe a little less interesting than the divide by zero, since that's more of a bug that we could visually spot, um, where the divide by zero one is a little more difficult to spot. But let's give this another run and see what we end up with. We still end up with four because we're using div trunk, which totally makes sense. Anyways, this was short. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, fun little talk, talk through on how you can use LLDB. Um, I think there's integrations for LLDB into VS Code. I am positive there's a way to set this up with NeoVim. I have not done that yet. I need to do that. Uh, I would love a much better experience. Truth be told, Flutter has spoiled me with that. So uh, maybe that'll be a fun thing for me to do for the rest of the day is figure out how to set that up with NeoVim. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, let me know in the comments below. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Uh, and you'd like to. I don't want to force you into it, but I'd like for you to be here. And then, um, yeah, I think that's it. Like the video if you haven't, maybe. Have a great day.